All right, hello, hello everyone, and welcome to the second PowerPoint for Budgetary Policy Unit 4, Area Study 1 in Economics, where we're going to be looking at government outlays, basically how the government spends the money that they receive through um, direct tax, non-direct tax, or indirect tax, and non-tax revenue. Um, we're going to look at all the different ways the government can spend their money. It's pretty brief, we're really going to have four slides of information, so it's pretty cruisy for you guys today. So let's get right into it and have a look at it. So first up, if we were just to have a look at it on here, it is the types of government expenses, including government current capital expenditure, transfer payments, and the budget outcome, balance deficit or surplus. So we're going to get right into that here. So um, budget expenses or outlays basically represents how the government uses their revenue to provide goods and services for the community. So it's mostly spent on welfare. A ridiculously large portion of the government's outlays are spent on welfare. Um, and this is to redistribute income for equity reasons. So the reason why we have a progressive tax system and the rich get taxed a lot more than the poor is so that we can redistribute the income so the poorer income um, families can have a higher standard of life. The budget also goes to help fund health, so running expenses, salaries, um, subsidizing drugs to make them more affordable um, if needed goes to defense to make sure our defense force is sizable and able to defend our country if need be goes for education so goes to pay for staff like this guy and other people and also um like things at the moment helps the schools be able to have enough cleaners to clean high contact areas so we don't all get coronavirus and then also pays for transport so like roads rails shipping aviation there's a lot of funding in those areas to make sure that we have um transport so we can get places when we're eventually allowed to go places. Mm -hmm. um, and it also represents how the government uses revenues to provide goods and services to the community through housing. So we've got public housing in certain areas of um, the state or in every suburb. You'll see the government has provided housing for low income individuals. And obviously that would come from the government's outlays. We've got public service wages, so anyone who works directly for the government in the public service, they'll have those wages. So if they work for a council or say like they work in the library, they're getting paid by the government. Um, public debt interest, so any debt that we have, paying interest on that to try and, well, so we don't go into more debt because of that. Net payments to other governments, so state, local, to provide public services, so giving the state government funding so they can actually provide the state with the resources that they need. Other economic affairs so like tourism campaigns, um, training schemes, so like tourism campaigns going to be massive after this pandemic's over because we're going to need to pump tourism back up. First it will be domestic tourism once the state borders open and you see New South Wales and Queensland stop fighting with each other about borders um, because tourism is going to be massive at getting our economy firing again. Um, and then lastly, for mining, manufacturing, and construction outlays, so special assistance to help research and development. So to have a look at how government outlays looked in 2018-2019. So as you can see, 36% of all government spending went to social security and welfare. So $176 billion went to that. And that so that is of a $488.6 billion dollar um, spend, 36% of that went straight to Social Security and Welfare. So you can see that that is the largest part of government spending. So if we were to classify government spending, there are three main types that we look at. We look at G1, which is government consumption spending. So that's the salaries and day-to-day -day operating expenses. So like my salary comes under G1 um, and other just government day-to-day -day expenses. So um, paying for things to remain open, etc. G2 is government investment spending, so buildings and equipment, so any money spent on infrastructure, uh, projects, all those kind of things, that is government investment spending, so that's G2. So things like, I always think of the Westgate Tunnel being G2, and that is a major infrastructure project that injects a lot of money into the economy, creates a lot of jobs, creates a lot more aggregate demand. That is a massive, any infrastructure project is a great example for G2 spending that can um, stimulate the economy. And lastly, we've got government transfer payments. So welfare and industry assistance, this isn't included in G1 or G2. We kind of looked at this briefly when we looked at aggregate demand. 
transfer payments aren't included in G1 or G2 because then they would be double counted in aggregate demand. So when we look at our C plus I plus G plus X minus M, if welfare payments were included in G, it would mean that when um, they spend that, it would also be included in I and it would overstate aggregate demand. So transfer payments, welfare payments aren't included in G1 and 2 because they become the consumption spending like the income for people who receive them. And that's it for government expenses. So these are the things governments spend their money on when they get their um, taxes and non-tax revenue in. These are the different things that the government spends money on to try and stimulate the economy. You're going to need to have examples of some of these, be able to give examples of how some have changed. I highly recommend infrastructure projects. Like if you use the Westgate Tunnel, you will mostly be correct about how the government can use outlays to stimulate economic activity. Because with things like the Westgate Tunnel or any other like major road or transport project, you can easily talk about how it's created jobs, how it's creating more incomes and therefore leading to more um, consumption spending, etc. Um, it's just a really, really good example to help, especially with the fact that we're focusing probably a lot in the future on trying to keep growth stimulated to create more employment, etc. That is going to be a great one to use. So um, either way, thank you for watching this. I hope it was helpful for you. Uh, next time we're going to start looking at the budget outcome um, as well as I believe automatic and discretionary stabilizers, which is where it gets a little bit more complicated and we'll probably have to spend a little bit time, more time diving into that in depth. But if you have any questions at all, just leave me a message or send me an email and um, I'll see you next time. Have a great day. Goodbye.